Congratulations. Much. Cecile Kiyangi, who Absolutely. was born in the Democratic Republic of Congo, is a doctor, was made Minister of Integration, first black cabinet minister in Italy. Look what's happened to her. She goes to public meetings. She has bananas thrown at her. You have, in April this year, the Italian MEP, Mario Borghezio, said Kiyangi wants to impose her tribal traditions from the Congo. She seems like a great housekeeper, but not a government minister. In August 2013, Roberto Caldorelli, Arbero. president of Italy's Senate, addressing an outdoor yes. rally at the, for the Northern League Party. I love animals. When I see pictures of Kiengi, I cannot but think of the features of an orangutan. And and say, that is appalling. What that is kind appalling? of comment is used. I mean, he apologised. Yeah, what happened he to did. Him? What happened to him? Nothing. Hello and welcome to another day in paradise and welcome to another edition of the Unapologetic Negropian. In today's video, we have a tale of a racist Italian politician and his racist attack on a Congolese-born Italian politician by the name of Cecile Kiyenge. And how her father used the power of the ancestors, apparently, to exact some revenge on this racist POS. We're gonna get into this story right now, but first I'm gonna ask you to please like, subscribe, share, click the bell notification, and consider supporting us on our new Patreon account from less than a dollar a month. Link in the description. Now guys, I've been talking a lot about the power of African spiritualism. I'm gonna be honest with you. I don't believe that there is some powerful entity out there that is giving us power to do certain things. I think we all have that power inside of us. I do believe that we have that type of power to make things happen, but I don't believe that comes from some person who has access to that power. I think we all have access to it. I think that some people are just more astute to accessing that power more than others. Needless to say, when I read this story, I was dubious. I'm going to give you a bit of background about it. You would have probably have heard about this story before. It made international news. Back in 2014, a Italian politician by the name of Roberto Calderoli ignited a race row when he suggested that another politician, a Congolese-born doctor by the name of Cecile Kiyenge, who is an integration minister in Italy, by comparing her to being an ape or an orangutan, if we need to be more specific. If I have to explain what racism is like in Italy, I mean, I spent a month there last year, and I could say it's there, it's, it's not prevalent, okay? It all depends on what part of Italy you are in. Southern Italy and Northern Italy are almost like two completely different countries. Northerners are also generally more educated. So the racism, which is still there, is different. In the South, it's, it's there, but it's very, very rare to come across it. But when it does happen, it's overt. In the North, it's more prevalent, but it's definitely more covert. So that's just to give you a bit of background of where this is all coming from. If you're from the Congo and you've just moved to Italy, you are gonna stand out like a sore thumb. This brings us swiftly to Cecile Kiyenge, who was born in the Congo, came to Italy back in 1983 and rose through the ranks of the medical world and became a doctor, became a surgeon, and then after that went into politics and became the country's integration minister. She is the only black politician in the whole of Italy. I'm not sure if that's still the case now, but definitely back in 2014, she was the only black uh, politician in the whole of Italy. Now, this left her exposed to all kinds of racist abuse, from the public and from people inside of her government. This brings us swiftly on to the silly comments made by Roberto Calderoli. This guy is the vice president of Italy's Senate. I'm going to read off his comment that he made about Cecile Cayenge. He said it at a political rally in the northern town of Trevelligio. I quote verbatim, I love animals, bears and wolves as everyone knows. But when I see pictures of Kiyenge, I cannot but think of, even if I'm not saying she is one, the features of an orangutan. Yeah, he said that. 
His comments sparked international condemnation from both politicians, world leaders, and also from the public, from all around the world, and from around Italy too. Word got back all the way to Kinshasa, to the Kienge family. Now, if you are a father of a daughter who's thousands of miles away and you're in Africa, and you are blessed, let's say that, you're blessed with the ability to use the power gifted to you by your ancestors, what do you do? Of course, it's the only thing you can use, right? I mean, you're not going to just use harsh language, are you, to exact some form of revenge on this man for trying to belittle your own daughter. And so that is just what he did. Clement Kienge performed a ceremony. Now, that's all we can say it is at this present moment. It was more than likely some form of voodoo. Now, her father is a powerful man where he comes from. He is a traditional chief. So he's not some half-baked chief who says he has power. You know, this guy is absolutely the real deal. The ceremony was filmed by a gossip magazine called Ogi. So I'm going to show you the vast majority of the ceremony that I just managed to find. It wasn't easy to find it and it sure as hell wasn't easy to extract the video off the internet. So I'm going to show it to you and um, let me know what you think. The type of ceremony Mr. Kienge performed because it had some profound <laughs> effects which I'm going to tell you a little later on. But take a look at this. <laughs> Maybe. Yeah. 
Sangha, trovamo l'ombre di Sangha, che è un uccello. In Dio, 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 Demanda aux ancêtres pour qu'ils pardonnent et qu'il n'y qu ait plus de malheur. Le, le prêtre qui panda a demandé aux ancêtres de pardonner les blancs, de ne plus lui donner des, des problèmes. Nous, on n'a pas de problème, on l'a déjà pardonné. Mais ce qui arrive, c'est que peut-être c'est de son côté qui n'a pas demandé le pardon sincère. Wow, so that was heavy. If there's any Congolese viewers, please let us know if you can translate just what they were saying during the ceremony. There was a part when there was by the shrine and he was saying something in the shrine. This is very heavy because this scared this politician. I mean, he, it really, really scared him to the point in which he had to apologize to Cecile Kienge However, by the time he had done that, it was too late. In a series of misfortunes, Mr. Calderelli went through an extremely hard six months right after that ceremony was performed. At first, he was charged for racial defamation. I'm not sure what came of that. I'm not sure if he was actually prosecuted. He is a politician, so I'm not even sure if, he was, if it was possible for him to be prosecuted but he was definitely charged for it and then after that his mother died and then after that he had to have bypass surgery after that surgery there was complications he had to have surgery again he then suffered from sepsis and had to have another operation he then had to have another operation to fix a hand that he broke in his home in total he had six operations and that's not all you see whilst recovering from these operations he encountered a six foot snake in his kitchen the funny thing is is that after he killed the snake journalists told um, mr kienge back in the congo told them that he killed the snake and mr kienge his reaction was like well, well he killed it yeah yeah he killed the snake Oh, I don't know about that. <laughs> I don't think he should have done that. <laughs> he said something like that. That's, that, that's not good. <laughs> Mr. Kienge also told journalists that he wasn't actually trying to curse. Mr. Kienge denied putting a curse on Mr. Calderoldi, but I mean, all this was just too much of a coincidence. What Mr. Kienge said that he was doing is he was trying to purge these types of thoughts out of Mr. Calderoli, but I don't know. I don't know about that. Mr. Calderoli, after all this, was petrified. He also considered calling the Pope and he knew he needed an exorcist because he believed that his house was being not haunted but he was being cursed essentially by spirits that were evoked by Mr. Kayenge himself. Mr. Calderoli went into free fall afterwards health-wise politically as well. He lost his seat on the Senate. He also became bedridden at one point so 
all this happened in the space of eight months <laughs> just eight months after this religious ceremony so what do you guys think do you think it's just a absolute massive coincidence right that all these things happened just after the religious ceremony or do you think that mr kienge really truly has this power to evoke the spirits of the ancestors it would be really good to hear from you guys let me know in the comments section below let's have a chat about it do any of you guys know how to um translate what was being said during the ceremony it would be really good to hear from you and see if you if we can try and work out what exactly the type of ceremony which was done specifically because Mr. Kiengis, it was nothing dangerous. It was nothing that was supposed to be uh, a direct attack on Mr. Calderoli, but it doesn't seem that way. <laughs> it just doesn't seem that way, does it? If you can translate, it'll be really good to hear from you. Uh, if you know about this ceremony, let me know. I don't know much about the rituals down there in the DRC. If you do know more, please let me know. Let's have a chat about it. It'd be good to hear from you. So thank you very much. Thank you for watching. And I will see you in the next one. Until the next time, please think twice. Tarara a bit.